Hello there! Today, we're going to be looking at who does space travel best, and we'll be focusing on Stargate. Space is big. You just won't believe how vastly, hugely, mind-bogglingly big it is. This is of course from Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, and that means if you want space travel, you have two options. Increase speed to faster than light, or FTL for short, to reduce journey time, or make everything close together. We have previously looked at Star Trek's Warp Drive and Star Wars' Hyperdrive, so today we're taking a different approach, one that removes the need for space travel whilst still exploring the galaxy. We are finishing the trifecta of stars and looking at Stargate's Stargate. Background. The Stargate is a fantastic invention, allowing you to travel many light years in mere seconds. It seems so technologically advanced that us humans would never invent something like it in fiction or reality. And that is true. The Stargate network was built by an alien race known as the Ancients. The technology is also old, very old, with the Stargate being found in Antarctica being estimated over 50 million years old. Thousands of worlds across several galaxies had Stargates built upon them, and any race with the knowledge of how to use them do. The Garuld, being one of the better known species in Stargate, depended on the Stargates to become a galactic power. So the Stargates are also known as Astria Porter in Ancient and Trepper Eye in Garuld, and were so advanced that only the Ancient, Assyrians, and Tornans could construct them. In universe statistics. So there's not too much to say about the stats of a Stargate. Unlike Star Trek's Warp Drive and Star Wars Hyperdrive, a Stargate is a Stargate, and there's, there's no improving upon it. The Stargate connects two distant points by creating a stable wormhole, we'll get to that later, and you just merrily walk through, having an average journey time of 3.2 seconds. The standard design for Stargates in the Milky Way was a circular ring, 6.7 meters in diameter, weighing in at 29 metric tons. All Stargates have a group of glyphs spaced around the inner ring, there's 39 for Milky Way gates, 36 for the Pegasus and Destiny style gates, and 9 chevrons spaced equally around the outer edge. The glyphs on the Milky Way and Pegasus gates represent the different constellations. In universe, science. A Stargate takes you from planet A to planet B in just a few moments, but how do they work? Firstly, you need the address of the Stargate you want to link to. Most times, you only need 7 of the 9 chevrons. The first 6 glyphs represent points in space given coordinates, and the 7th is the point of origin. As each set of coordinates is unique, it gives each gate a unique address. If you want to travel to a distant galaxy, 8 chevrons are needed, with chevron 7 being a distance calculation and chevron 8 being the point of origin. And when all 9 chevrons are used, it allows a connection to a specific gate instead of a location. We can calculate how many planets have a stargate using this formula. n factorial divided by open bracket n minus r close bracket factorial, where n is the number of things to pick from, and r is the amount we pick. So we have 38 symbols, plus our point of origin, and we are picking 6 symbols to dial a gate in the Milky Way. So this gives 38 factorial divided by 38 minus 6 factorial, or 38 factorial divided by 32 factorial, which gives 1,987,690,320 possible addresses. Or you could simply input this in a calculator as 38p6. Now you have the address, you need to input it, so the inner ring rotates until the dialed symbol is aligned with the 7th chevron. A subspace link connects the dialing gate to the receiving gate and a stable wormhole forms. So whilst forming the wormhole, a violent vortex of energy emerges and the event horizon is formed. All that's left is to go through, and this happens in three stages. Stage 1 is dematerialization. so as you pass through the event horizon, you are dematerialized and held in a hyperspace buffer. Stage 2 is transmission, where you are transferred to the receiving gate, and then stage 3 occurs. Reintegration, where you are reassembled. This is a one-way process, as each gate performs a different role. If you entered the receiving gate, you would arrive at the dialing gate for stage 1. Dematerialization, not the best way to end a journey. So if manually rotating the gate's ring sounds exhausting, don't worry, you don't need to. Dial home devices are computers, which establish a link with the Stargate and can control and power it. 
The DHD can dial these Stargate addresses and can store memory, so you can forget all the important addresses, just like a mobile phone. So the Stargate is made up of a material called Naquida. This is a rare element which can harness power from most sources and amplify the energy, meeting and surpassing the demand for power creating a wormhole requires. IRL science. So assuming aliens exist and have the technological capacity to build a Stargate, is the science behind how they work realistic? Most of the answer depends on wormholes. And there is good news. In 1916, Ludwig Flamm at the University of Vienna realised a black hole has an equal but opposite solution, a white hole. This means things can enter a black hole and escape via a white hole. The black hole entrance can be located at a different part of the universe or even a different universe than the white hole exit, so could be used to travel. Einstein's theory of general relativity predicts that wormholes can act as tunnels in space-time, and travel between these points via the wormhole would be instantaneous. A stargate could create and contain a black hole in the event horizon, and connect it to a white hole created by a receiving gate, and travel be nice and straightforward. Well, not exactly. Travelling through this wormhole would involve traversing a singularity, which is infinitely small and dense, and not great for the human body. Another flaw with wormholes is their instability. So exotic matter could theoretically be used to stabilise a wormhole and could be used in an artificial one. And one form of exotic matter is negative energy density. The Casimir effect shows that quantum field theory allows the energy density in certain regions of space to be negative relative to the ordinary matter vacuum energy. And it is scientifically and mathematically possible to create negative energy density. You simply create a vacuum and suck more out of it. How this is achieved, I don't know. However, it is a safe assumption that aliens like the ancients have the technical know-how. So all we need now is some Naquida. Sadly, this is fictional. There are things on Earth that are good conductors and can store energy. Lithium is the most common example being used in lithium ion batteries storing energy. Lithium is also a good conductor, so could be used to power Stargate. The biggest flaw is lithium has a very low density of 0.534 grams per centimetre cubed and is soft. It would be like using pine wood to construct something that needs to contain a wormhole. Not a great plan. Risks. Travelling through a Stargate is surprisingly safe, considering you are being dematerialised and transported across vast distances, as long as you don't enter the receiving gate, as that would lead to certain death. Creating the wormhole produces a temporary vortex of energy, and this will destroy any matter it contacts. So Earth's Stargate had a way of warning people a vortex was about to form, so you can negate the risk of getting in the way. There is also very little risk of losing limbs in the event horizon. Only discrete units will be dematerialised, so if you stick your arm in, as not all of you pass through the event horizon, you can pull your arm safely out. The other big risk comes from Naquida. This will react with potassium, creating massive explosions, and can admit radiation, so sadly, it must be a banana-free zone. Although Naquida can store large amounts of energy, there is a limit. Surpassing this limit will create another explosion, and could devastate life on Earth. Conclusion. So there we have it. The Stargate. A super fast method to travel to over a billion different planets in mere moments. A method that is scientifically plausible especially considering that it is alien tech, so they're, they're bound to have access to elements not found on Earth like Naquida. So once the mechanics of dialing the gate are understood, an entire galaxy and beyond opens up for exploration. The biggest downside to using the Stargate for exploration is you need a receiving gate already built. If you want to travel to a planet without a Stargate, tough. Despite this, due to the number of different permutations, I don't think we would run out of planets to explore anytime soon. Creating a stable wormhole is always an interesting concept for sci-fi, and when you throw in plot devices like Naquida, you can meet all the needs the technology would have, most notable need the energy required. So using the Stargate is a very safe method to travel, and there's no need to store and carry fuel with you, which is advantageous compared to using ships. So it is a very different method of travel compared to Star Trek and Star Wars, which accelerates vessels to FTO. Is it any better or worse? Time will tell. Thanks for watching, I'll talk to you again soon.